Welcome again. Today we're going to be talking about Stitch, not the knitting stitch, the program that predicts protein-protein and protein-chemical interactions. So to teach you about Stitch, we're going to start with an example from DNA polymerase beta subunit from humans. So I've gone ahead, as you can see, into NCBI protein database, and I'm looking for my protein of interest. Here it is. As with common, as is common with most of these programs, you need the FASTA sequence. So here it is. What makes Stitch different from most of these programs is that for the FASTA, you want to take this section or header off. You only want the protein sequence, and I'll show you why in a second. So to find the Stitch uh, website, you type in Stitch protein. Don't type just Stitch or you're going to find a bunch of stuff on knitting and other things. Um, so here's the Stitch Protein Chemical Network from the European uh, scientists. Go ahead and click on that. Now here we can use Stitch for predicting various interactions in different ways. We can search by a particular name. We can search by a structure. My personal favorite is always search by protein sequence. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So when I take my FASTA sequence, copy it on over into the Stitch for Protein Sequence detection, you can tell Stitch which uh, organism you have, but I am lazy, and so I always leave it as auto-detect. But just pay attention to that. Now Stitch is going through the databases and matching up for predicting what its potential interactions are. And so, um, oh hey, it was quick today. So when you get your results from Stitch, you can have various types of views for your particular network. For the network, you can have confidence view. So that's what we're seeing here. And confidence view, the thicker lines between nodes, nodes are going to be these circles and ovals and that sort of thing. The thicker lines mean stronger associations. When we have protein-protein interactions, those are in blue lines, and the green lines mean a chemical protein interaction. So then if I go ahead and scroll down, I can see that my input was the polymerase beta subunit, and that its predicted functional partners are these guys down here, which are represented very nicely by these... Um, nodes. So then you can match up which particular partner you have and what kind of association, how strong the associations are, etc. I forgot to mention here that that red line indicates uh, interaction between two chemicals. You can then scroll on down. There's various settings here. And so you can toggle on various active prediction methods. Um, I like to keep them all on just for completeness. If you want a more stringent confidence score, for example, you can play around with that. But it doesn't work unless you click Update Parameters, so go ahead and do that and wait a second. And what you will notice is now my very complicated confidence view has simplified significantly. Now I'm looking at only the interactions that have a confidence of 0.9 and higher, with 1 being the maximum. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you are not getting any connections, you might need to change it to a lower confidence score. Uh, additionally to this, we can have evidence view. And so when we click on evidence view, for example, now we can start to get different colored lines representing different types of evidence with association. So then you can go ahead and kind of arrow over your different lines to get a little bit more information, or even click on a particular line in order to get more detail on what that association is. This one I randomly clicked on um, is a very high confidence score based on PubMed abstracts between the beta subunit and DNA ligase. So you get the idea there. You can also do action views. But if you're going to do action views, in my humble opinion, you want the interactive view. So this tells you how your proteins are going to interact with each other. I guess mine don't have a very interactive view, so I'll go back to actions view. But you'll see, for example, that like this uh, cystidine arabidose or whatever that is. Oh, you got my curiosity. Where is it? Yeah, uh, cystidine 
uh, a rabbit outside, excuse me, close enough, that's going to potentially interact with the polymerase beta subunit. That beta subunit can potentially interact with this pyrophosphate, but it's not going to necessarily interact with this PCNA or whatever this thing is over here. So you get the idea then on how we can have these interactions, and you can see them going both directions, the red with the stop um, or the arrows going the other way. So these are very handy for interpreting what's going on in your particular uh, protein network, seeing where it fits in with other proteins that we know about in the cell. The one challenge with using STITCH is that you really do have to have a protein that something is known about. Doing STITCH on hypothetical proteins doesn't tend to work very well because when you do that, it finds other hypothetical proteins that it interacts with, and your confidence level also tends to go down. Simply because if you're doing STITCH on a hypothetical protein, we don't know much about the protein you're asking about to begin with. So STITCH has trouble pairing it up with things that are already in the known database. So just something to keep in mind, there are better programs if you're dealing with protein-protein interaction um, for hypothetical proteins. I like, uh, for example, 3D ligand sites, so that way you get a characterization of active site and potential ligands. So this is STITCH. Um, it's very similar to STRING, uh, which to my understanding is no longer available, but you get the idea. Again, if you have any comments or questions, please reach out to me. My email is laura.harris at davenport.edu, or you can post a comment. I'd love to hear from you and have a great day.